I find it absolutely fascinating that somebody called Dr. Rosalina Kombe, yeah, threw a grenade somewhere. Yeah, she had already removed the pin from this grenade. You know, when you remove a grenade from a pin, you allow it to explode on impact. Okay? So she threw this grenade. <laughs> Due to some malfunction, it failed to explode. Naikaka apotu. Okay? Now, this grenade has exploded almost six months later. Wow. Of course, I'm talking about the report she wrote. Yeah, her final report before she fled from the IEBC. Yeah, people say resign. But the truth is she fled the country from the IBC, which should already should tell you quite a lot. And my, oh my, what a report that was. Now I'm not going to bore you with a lot of boring details. I'm just going to bring out the explosive parts yeah, of this grenade of a report Dr. Kumbe wrote. In my view, this report proves beyond any reasonable doubt that the verdict of the Supreme Court on 1st September was correct. It vindicates that verdict and it proves beyond any reasonable doubt that actually there were no elections on August 8th. Yes, people went to vote, but what happened before even people were voting, before even people started voting, people were sitting in computer rooms. And what we ultimately got was pop, 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 president of Kenya. Yeah. Now, we're going to look at that a little deeper. Uh, when we come back from this very brief commercial break. See you in a minute. Welcome back. Kwani these August state elections will not go away? Aye. He may go too much. Yeah. Now we've had other elections in the past fiddled with. Yeah. Uh, people complain. People. <laughs> people rant. People make noise. But very quickly people forget about it and they move on. So what is so special about the August 8th 2017 elections? They just won't go away. Just the other day here in the office. I told somebody, oh, forget those election uh, research, those election videos, forget about them. Nobody's going to talk about them anymore. Just trash them. Yeah, especially after the handshake. Uh, elections, August state, forget them. Oh, boy. Was I wrong or what? <laughs> Sample this. There's the handshake. You know, people now say, okay, now we're not discussing the elections. Okay? Even if somebody wants to discuss them, nobody will be interested. And then, pop. Cambridge Analytica scandal. Eh, people are back to discussing those elections. And that one ends, and you think it is the end, something else comes up. Now the latest, of course, is this Akombe report. And people again are back to discussing August 8th. Aye. Hey, hey. Will these elections ever go away? It doesn't look like it. 
and I suspect it has something to do with the overturned Manenos. Let me just leave it at that. Anyway, on to the Akombe report. Now, Dr. Rosalind Akombe is a very intelligent Kenyan. Oh my, oh my, that lady is smart. Why do I say that? I say that because of the way she compiled that report. Dr. Akombe obviously knew how polarized our politics is, and she knew that if she was not careful, people would just trash that report and say it was compiled at NASA headquarters, that it's a document for the opposition, by the opposition. So what did she do? She focused on making the report very factual. Okay? Other things she left out. Now it is very important to note that everything said in this report carries a lot of weight. Why? Because it was written by an insider. It's written from right inside the IABC. This is not an investigative journalist trying to poke their nose inside. This is not somebody from the outside writing. It's actually generated from right inside the bowels of the IABC, if I can put it like that. One thing that I personally found very fascinating in the report is that Dr. Kombe says that uh, the actual returning officers who showed her the famous, infamous uh, Form 34B, yeah, filled out correctly with all the figures and so on and so forth. But then she noticed that uh, the figures that were in these uh, forms which were filled out and transmitted were very different from what Bwana Ezra Chiloba submitted to the Supreme Court for the presidential petition. And she poses the question, why? Now from this uh, little piece of information, it is obvious that we had two results on August 8th. The genuine results still locked up in the servers and which uh, uh, Dr. Kombe saw the uh, returning officers' uh, reports, yeah, which were different from Chiloba's. And then we have the cooked results. Okay, obviously went by the cooked results. Oh boy. Then Dr. Kombe talks about the corruption. The excitement within the commission when it came to approving tenders. Multi-million shilling tenders. So clearly, while Kenyans were waiting for a free, fair and verifiable election, other people were busy making money. Gosh. Now one of the recommendations Dr. Kombe makes is that in uh, appointing commissioners, people should not only look at the academic qualifications, they should also look at experience in running elections. Now, it has become very crystal clear to Kenyans that these jokers we had as uh, electoral commissioners were just that, jokers. Very high, highly qualified professors of uh, animal husbandry eh? being brought in to run elections. <laughs> Uyu ni professor. Eh? Professors ni watu wamesoma sana. Uyu weka uyu hapa haraka sana. Uyu anajua kila kitu. <laughs> Others were human resource uh, management experts. Okay? And PR. Holding dual citizenships of other countries. Yeah, they have no idea what goes on in Kenya. They have no idea about Kenyan politics. Weka uyu hapo. Others, their mere appearance does not generate any confidence. Yeah? You start wondering, when you see the picture, you start wondering, Ai, did the watchman at the IBC come into the photograph by mistake? <laughs> <laughs> now I want to tell you something that you probably did not know. All this was deliberate. Yes, you heard me right. It was very deliberate. The government side and the opposition side sat together to select these commissioners. However, I can assure you that the government side was very keen to select the kind of people who would not challenge the system. If push came to shove, they were not going to challenge the system. And they were going to do exactly as they were told. The whole idea about being a commissioner, apart from being impartial, you should be the kind of person if you receive a message like, oh, there's somebody from status who wants to see you, you don't bat an eyelid. You say they want to see me about what? As far as I'm concerned, the current state was just one of the competitors in the elections, and I am the referee, so I will not see anybody from state house. That is rubbish. Now, just looking at the faces of those commissioners and looking at how they behaved, do you see any single person there capable of doing that? No way. These are just school prefects, yeah, selected very carefully by the school administration 
to make sure that they look like they're with the students, but actually they will report only back to the teaching staff or the headmaster. Now there's a lot of uh, noise at the moment, yeah, a lot of suggestions, left, right and center, on how to improve the IEBC, on changes that should be made to our electoral system. And very few arguments, or none of these arguments at all, are addressing the root cause of all these manenos. And what is the root cause? State interference. It's simply that. You see, the state cannot allow uh, an electoral body that is completely independent. It's a threat to national security because they'll not be able to control yeah, the outcome of a presidential poll. And the state must be able to control the outcome of a presidential poll. That's really what it is. And this interference start to, starts right with voter registration. Yeah, You have uh, uh, dead people in the voters register. The state refuses to remove them. Yeah, in fact, one audit put them at two million dead voters. Yeah, in the voters register, and it extends even to vote staffing. Now, the very interesting thing about August eighth is that even after all that, yeah, they still didn't get the winner they wanted. The other person won the election. That is very clear, and that is why it had to be done in the computer room. Yeah, pop, 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 pop. So the long and short of this is that whatever system you come up with, as long as the state interferes, nothing will change. You know, the solution to all this is very simple, and it's staring us in the face, the government is aware of it, but they will never ever implement it, because it will make them lose control, and they can't bear to lose control. The state losing control, as I've said, is a threat to national security. Oh boy. Now, the solution is very simple. And I'm not the first to say this, many people have said it, and I believe it is very obvious. As of March 2007, Safaricom's M-Pesa service had 18 million active users, 18 million. Registered voters uh, in Kenya, in our last election, were in the region of 19 million, including the 2 million dead guys, of course. Anyway, the solution is just to create an M-Pesa service uh, call it M vote or whatever that uh, covers uh, voting. You simply register voters the way you register M PESA users, and then you give them a SIM card. Yeah, they don't even have to have a phone of their own. And on voting day, all people do is they vote on their phone, on somebody else's phone, with their own SIM card, pure and simple. The election results will be known in minutes, and it has many advantages. Voting day does not have to be a holiday. You just vote on your phone in the morning and you go about your normal business. Things don't have to come to a standstill just because of an election. Just think about it. How much does the country lose when we have to go, when we have a voting day? When people have to stop everything else they're doing, commercial activities and so on, just to go and vote, to line up for hours to vote. Now there's something else. Voter turnout is becoming a major issue the worldwide. Yeah, With this kind of system, voter turnout no longer is an issue because one does not physically have to go out of their house or away from where they live to vote they vote right inside their bedroom now all the technology expertise everything is available within the country it is just implementation but sadly the state will never allow such a system never ever a free verifiable election system in kenya forget it Go tell that to the birds. And so we'll continue with our games. Yeah, the last, the last electoral commission failed because of one, two, three. Let's correct that in this one. Oh, waste of time. The last electoral system, we had uh, one, we had a thin uh, commissioner, uh, chairman. The other one, we have a fat one, or rather uh, a bonge one, <laughs> as the Swahili put it. Yeah, so this time let's go for an overweight one. <laughs> Games, 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 and just cutting around the issues, pretending we're discussing, but absolutely just wasting everybody's time. If anybody is, is very serious about having a free and fair election, let's just go M Kura, yeah, all SIM cards, and phone Manenos. The rest are just details. Until next time, this is Chris Kumekuja.